And uh, we came, me and my wife, we came down here uh, like eight, like eight months ago. You know how it is. I mean, these are the times when the kids are grown up and they start kicking you out of the house. But not true. I mean, a little quiet and calm is always welcome to your guests. Right. <laughs> Uh, when we come, when we came here with my wife, we literally fell in love with the area. Uh, the more we discover about it, the more I mean, the deeply we, we fall in love. But look, just imagine about that unique and fantastic rock formation, and uh, knowing that it has been shaped over one million years of wind and uh, water erosion, but also such a deep history uh, that goes so far five thousand years of uncovered one, maybe a few thousand more. To be yet uncovered, uh, but such an accumulation of uh, people, culture, like uh, uh, starting with the Hatti, the Hittite, the Frigs, the Romans, the Ottomans, etc., but also so many different faiths and belief crossing this land makes it truly unique in all sense of the word. But in terms of my own profession, that is also one of the most important or the transition part per se. Uh, from this tribal style to the more imperial style. I know that if I were to ask you, what would you think uh, when the word handmade drug is being said, you would immediately think of an item of interior decoration. But when you think of this history that goes 5,000 years from our times, <laughs> yeah, I mean, those guys were tribal, they were living in tents and they had no intention of using handmade drugs as part of an interior decoration. The purpose of the creation was simply to replace something that they, they were already using in the floors, and those were animal skins. So the lady that came up with the idea to replace those animal skins, I'm calling her a the carpet lady, uh, because, well, we're also speaking of times when tanneries are not that advanced and those animal skins are drying out too quickly or and they're not very durable. So the first carpet was no more than imitate a ship skin and put it on the floor. So rugs at the beginning have been done with no colors and patterns whatsoever. It's only in time that they have been added. And to better understand that evolution, I believe that one needs to know that these ancient tribal people used to be shamanist people. And you may know that in the shamanist belief, uh, what you do is simply you load meanings into, into, onto your surrounding nature in general, and you're, you're in contact with the spirits. And well, we're speaking of the true matriarchal times when women are in true power. And thank you, ladies, for letting us assume that things have changed ever since. Uh, I'm not stuck in learning. It's been four years I'm married. But the shaman is a woman, cannot be a man. Men are not considered pure enough to be contacted by the spirits. So this is how they start loading meanings onto colors. At first, like red became power, blue happiness, green prosperity. And actually what they, they are doing is uh, simply copying nature because red is fire, blue is the blue sky, green is all the nature around them. And the way the master to apply those colors, they start drawing patterns and slowly but surely create, you know, symbolic languages that they start using to transfer knowledge to their following generations. Well, script, uh, language is completely forgotten throughout time, especially with the adaptation of the more modern scripts. But the concept itself still remaining and becoming what I call today the signature of the carpet. In other words, um, the, those villagers or towners, descendants of these ancient tribal people who are constantly repeating the same patterns and colors over and over again without even remembering why, it is simply because that has become their tradition and they're not, they cannot change that. A, a pattern or a signature that obviously will change from one tribe to another, from one town to uh, another, or even from one geography to another. Wool, dear guests, has been the only material they have been using for so many years. And these guys were true experts on wool. They knew how to get a higher quality wool. Be even before science uh, that that substance within the wool landed in, they were aware of that substance, and they knew how to raise that substance to get a better quality wool by constantly moving from plateaus to valleys in order to be able to keep the animal always in cool temperatures. And they also knew which part of the animal to use for what. Like, if today one of our sales, one of the salespeople in handmade drugs would pretend that 
the carpet is done with a wolf taken from the neck part or the chest part of the wool of the animal, don't believe a word. That is not only too short, but that is too soft to be used on a handmade rug. Whereas the back, with those longer yarns, uh, is and exposed to all the harshness of uh, the weather conditions, is a much higher durability kind of a wool that is used in handmade rugs. And speaking of colors, well, I may be considered as a colorist because I'm a photographer. I own a YouTube channel, but that's in Turkish, so don't bother. But I'm not an expert on ingredients of vegetable dyes, but I know a few of them. Per se, the um, red color is mainly done with an ingredient that is known as the madder root. And madder root, uh, depending on the amount of the madder root that you're adding, depending on the amount or the time of boiling, you are going to get many different shades of the same colors. And that applies also to indigo with the blues. Yellow is another story, because you can get yellow out of onion skins, as well as you can get on, uh, uh, yellow from daisies, or like some stubborn cultures that are still keeping you know, very tightly to their traditions, you can use saffron. Mm -hmm. But saffron has become a very expensive yes. ingredient, mm -hmm. but still they're using it. Mm -hmm. Do you use mustard seed? Do you use your mustard seed? Mustard seed as well, yes. And many other things. Look, one of the reasons why no one can truly become an expert in ingredients is that actually each tribe has its own recipes, you know? Yeah. Well, speaking of colors, there is one color that is not going to be found in any older type rugs, and that is black. It is not because black is not obtainable out of nature, Black is simply done out of dry pomegranate skin added with iron dust, where you get a very beautiful and quite shiny black. But black is not being used simply to the fact that it was related too much with death and yeah. evil. Mm -hmm. oh. But in the new modern era, black has become very popular. Yes, in the more decorative type of rugs, you are going to start seeing blacks, black as colors as well. Speaking of that 5,000 years of handmade carpet history, if you are asking yourselves how we came up with that timeline, it is simply because of a, one very lucky discovery that happened in 1946 by a Russian uh, scientist or archaeologist, Mr. Vladimir Mudenko, who discovers a completely, almost completely intact carpet that was protected by ice in a dig in the Ural Altai in Central Asia in a Kurgan. A Kurgan is a downward tomb, where a terminus is an upward tomb, if I may, you know, simplify the understanding of that. And uh, that is uh, a carpet that you can see right now in the exhibition in the Museum of Hermitage in St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. But after they made the carbon-14 test, they dated the carpet somewhere around 500 BC. And after a thorough technical examination, uh, finding out that the rug was a wool-on-wool -wool one, they were quite stunned to find out that, yet yeah, up to date, the number of knots that have been reached on that rug is not, uh, it is the top of the knots. And I know that in the United States, I've been told that you guys are going metric. <laughs> but that I know that also happens inch by inch. Okay, so the number that has been reached on that very old carpet is 232 knots per square inch. And contrary to what the experts from that time used to believe that rugs from that era could only be tribal, and finding out that a rug was customly made for a princess changed the whole concept. And that helped them and us to go back another 2,500 years back in time and give that estimation of 5,000 years ago. And as far as the starting point, geographically speaking, trust me, all the roads lead back to Siberia. It has been discovered, and the carpet itself, that you can see in the museum of uh, the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. And other than that, all the others that you can see here are actually artifacts that have been uncovered in this whole ground as well. Dear guys, when you're looking at that scene that we have tried, we have created to try and give you a visual idea of what you know that tribal lifestyle was looking like, and if you are focusing on that beautiful rug here, quite bold, fake, quite rudimentary. And try to visualize that one with absolutely no colors and patterns whatsoever. That is going to give you the idea of what rugs were looking like in the beginning of times. And speaking of symbolism, I'm going to give you one in that place. 
Okay, a bird can be the will for freedom, but the most import important symbolism is the one that symbolizes the power of the one with the lady with the hands on the hip. And you're going to find that in the lot of carpets. Okay. Now, you guys, when I when I'm speaking of wool, you can see that wool is no more than that, actually. And uh, if you are asking yourselves how you transform, how we transform these into uh, threads, well, it's quite easy. We're just spinning these by hand with these spindles. Okay. And here you may notice that the thickness is not even, mm -hmm. which is going to result in different absorptions of dyes, even if the same color is being applied, uh, which is going to create variations on the same color in the handmade rugs. A little less or more dramatic, doesn't matter, but it is going to be there if, it, if the rug is completely <coughs> vegetable dyes. And one of the reasons that we are still spinning the wool by hand is to be able to keep the lanolin within the wool, not get rid of it like machine spun wool, yeah. which is very important. And the other reason why we are uh, still using vegetable dyes is actually the lanolin itself, since we have discovered in the year 1980s when <coughs> the first chemical dyes have been introduced in the market that lanolin and chemical dyes are not good friends. Okay, and, well, other than that, it's rather free in nature. But when we say color of wool, wool does not come only in one color. It comes in many different colors throughout many different animals, such as well, you know, gray, black, or brown sheep as well. Yes. And we happen to have one beautiful production of a rug that carries absolutely none, no dyes whatsoever, but only these colors. And we're calling that collection the natural collection. I'm going to show you them all. Speaking of the other materials, to be able to start using the other materials, such as cotton, you need to settle it down long enough to be able to grow the material and start using it, right? And that is something that did not happen earlier than the 16th century for we Turks. But silk, quite interestingly, being on the silk road for more than a couple of thousand years, silk was only considered good enough for, for costumes or textile. Until a certain sultan, one of the last of the Ottoman era, the Sultan Abdul Mejid, decided that he was privileged enough to walk on a pure silk rug. No. And that is when they decided to found the last imperial manufacturer in a small town not far from Istanbul called Erede. And that is in 1843. And that is from that very era, from that very epoch, that you are going to start seeing pure silk rugs. So pure silk rugs are not in this earth long enough for us to have tested their durability forms. Mm -hmm producing a protein extract uh, on an incredible length that is reaching one mile on an average. Can you believe that? Mm. If we're to online one of these cocoons, it is reaching an average of one mile. And look, touch and feel that you're going to see that it's quite stiff. Oh, okay, it's not a soft material as one may think, but contrarily, this is actually proportionally stronger than steel. Mm -hmm. And to soften that enough to be able to transform that into threads or unwind it, you actually need to boil it into these hot water for 44, 45 minutes and use that very high-end technology of that short sweeper <laughs> to start picking up the starting point or points of those cocoons to start spinning the first thread. And uh, when you do that, it's generally the first 30 cocoons that comes with this sweeper. And let's see if you if you are learning that because he's learning right now. <laughs> hey, he's getting wow. better and better every day. Thanks, wow. bravo! <laughs> Congrats, young young lad. Okay, and this is how you are doing that. And you see, he's actually putting that here and uh, turning that onto that wheel, rolling that onto that wheel to create that first thread. And you see that those first thirty cocoons spinach or the first thread is no thicker than a hair right. and speaking of hair please be kind enough not to speak of that word next to me <laughs> okay <laughs> well how many of these cocoons would we need for a, for a thread good enough or strong enough to work on a silk or silk rug well the starting number is 800 and that can be anywhere from 8 to 1200 threads on for one thread complete uh, you know, if, if you'd like to sit on the 
Yeah, please. Yes, the technique for making handmade rug has never changed. Uh, in these 5,000 years of handmade rug history, the technique is still the same. Uh, those rugs are being made on these. Those, well, please stop, Hanife. I want the full concentration on me. I am so evil centric. Okay. Dear guests, um, we prepare the loom by wrapping these vertical strings of, you call them warp threads, correct? Okay. In a quite specific way, because we need to create a split eight shape warp structure uh, that brings a front and back, back part to be able to use it in a certain time throughout the process. But to say that a rug is woven may not be wrong, but not accurate enough, because weaving is no more than this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but knots are applied on handmade rugs. So maybe that, to say that a rug is knotted is going to be more accurate than to, to say that a rug is woven. So, speaking of knots, there are two different knotting techniques existing worldwide. And the oldest of them is known as the double knot, or the Gordian knot, which happens to be the Turkish knot. I don't want to sound too nationalist about this, but uh, this is how they call it. So the double knot, or a single knot, which is a Persian knot, either way, you need a couple of these warp threads. Please come closer to me. You want, you, you, you want to see that. We will now ask Azimir uh, to show us how she is making the knot. She picks each time a couple of these warp threads, and then she goes around the first warp, and then goes around the second warp. She makes a knot, she ties it, takes it down. <laughs> Tell your phone I'm not here, darling. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. She goes around the first, goes around the second. Ties a knot, takes it down, and cuts it. And since both of the warps wow. are being held by the knot, that is why it's called the double knot. The single knot, on the other hand, is one that has been created throughout the, the, the end of the 1800s by per, Persian merchants mm -hmm. in order to, you know, save 30 percent time and material uh, due to the increasing demand of Oriental rugs towards the European market. And in this single knot, Tikri, you're going to see that although the knot starts the exact same way, it ends up completely different by being twisted under the second warp. So that second warp is completely loose, and as a result, when she pulls, the knot is easily coming out. Okay, dear guys, the work is one that goes obviously knot by knot and row by row. So one row at a time, and after each row that has been made, and you want to keep that row where it is, you need to add a chain on top of that row of knots. And to be able to do that, you can either go in and out like that, or you can use that split warp structure, which is where it comes in handy, by simply doing that. Loosening that part, switching the structure, going the other way around and actually creating the chain in a much easier way. Well, when I first started this business, like a long time ago, where times were good friends with Cleopatra, <laughs> okay, I first, I made a rug, but nothing to do with such a fancy rug. That was a very simple one because I wanted to understand truly uh, what I was promoting or explaining as an expert. So I quickly find out that that chain part was one of the most tricky parts of the process. Because for one thing, you don't want that chain to be neither too tight nor too loose because you want to keep the structure as straight as possible. But the, the second part that is quite tricky is the time, is when the time comes, you need to comb the whole rows down with this iron comb we call the chirkit. I can definitely tell if she has a beef with the husband or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there guess that beating strength or that tension, to say in the, pro the more proper word, is something that is going to differ from one person to another, making it one of the main reasons why you would prefer the same person to complete the whole rug, not to have that difference of tension or not to have the look of a sweat in it by two different ladies. But well, that is a very same tension that determines the number of knots on the length. Whereas the number of knots on the width has have been predetermined by the amount of warps you wrap around the loom. Where you cannot go wrong here, but you could easily go wrong on the length. 
And what we want for Iraq to be on this one, strength and quality is not to have more or less notes on either side, but quite, to, quite contrarily, to have an even number of, on both sides. What? Okay, let me put it this way. Let's take a rug, let's assume that the rug carries 10 knots by 10 knots on the inch. Okay. 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 So you don't want a rug that has 10 knots by 15. No. Or you don't want a rug that has 10 knots by 5. No. You want a rug that has 10 knots by 10. Do you know why? Simply to be able to okay. spread okay. the whole force equal on the whole okay. surface of the rug. Okay. okay. You need that, that thing to be even. Well, besides, if you're not following the proper procedure, the pattern is going to look stretched or vice versa. Wavy. Absolutely. And you aren't going to get the forms on very well. Yeah. And you know, the number of knots itself is something that is completely determined by uh, the thickness of the material that you are going to be using, which is not a rocket science. And which makes uh, an argument provided by my fellow rug dealers worldwide quite irrelevant. And that is the number of knots itself. You may have heard them pretending that more knots is going to make a rug better. <laughs> it only makes it more expensive, not better. Because more knots will obviously involve more work time, right? But before coming to that, let me show you what you need to do to complete the work on one, on each row. Okay, so question. You see with these adjustables, this is called Magas. She will be trimming the excess of pile now to even the length of the final and finalized surface. Okay. And you may notice that there is a huge waste of material here, mm -hmm. which is not a problem with wool or with silk, which, is, which are both recyclable. But the problem lies with the silk. Silk is not a recyclable material. So one of the main reasons why silk rugs cannot be cheap, added to the enormous amount of uh, work that is involved into the process, is also the enormous amount of raw material that you are paying for, because that that wasted cost is added to the cost of the rug. Mm. In other words, if you're That's buying a rug that it. weighs one pound in pure silk, you are also going to be paying for five pounds of low silk material. Wow. And that is why silk rugs cannot be cheap. But don't you have something looking like silk and sounding cheap? Yes, you do. And we'll talk about that later. But now, I think that the question is, how long does it take to make a rug? Mm -hmm. to properly understand and justify the value. Mm -hmm. And for that you need to know a few numbers, one of them being the amount of knots these ladies can achieve a day. And we know that for these ladies it's an average of 4,000 knots. Mm -hmm. But look, when I say 4,000 knots, I don't want you to, to uh, visualize an 8 or 10 hours of constant work. No. Human concentration cannot cross 20 minutes of time, which basically means no more than two, two and a half hours of uh, effective work time per day for these ladies, regardless, regardless of that, it's still 4,000 knots. Mm -hmm. So the other number we need to know is the amount of knots required to complete the carpet. But let me take a square yard as a reference surface. Is that fair enough? Okay. If we, will, we are speaking of 10 by 10, which is, you know, 100 knots per square inch on the square yard, that is, that is reaching 160,000 knots. So when you divide those two numbers, you are reaching 40 days of effective work time. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's increase that number by only 50%. Now your rug is 15 by 15. But would you assume that it's now 60 days of work? No, nah, because it goes exponentially. Now all of a sudden the square yard becomes 360,000, and the amount of days becomes 90 days. So you understand here that even one knot will make a great deal of difference in the value determination of the rug. But would you like to hear the number on one square yard of a pure silk rug? <laughs> one freaking million. Wow. Excuse my French. But imagine that you are sitting in front of a loom, making a pure silk rug on a square yard, making the first knot, you'd know that you still have another 999,999 knots to make. Not fun at all, trust me. Do you have any questions to ask? Do they use a smaller loom? Oh, they use any kind of a loom. I mean, could they, if you were, if you were doing silk, would you be using a loom maybe this big? Well, but it's always going to be vertical. Uh, okay. You can scan it up. Yes. Now. Look at the loom just behind you. It's a smaller one. Exactly. But it's based on how big the permit's going to be. Oh, right? okay. Exactly. It's, made on si it's based on the size of the rug. Let me put it this way. To, to, it is, as I understand. The width of the loom is 
generally the width, of the, rug. the width of the rug. And the length of the loom is half the length of the rug. Because it's a rolling system that moves the more she makes it. Okay. Okay, we are going to... Yes, sir. Is everything on the carpet, the making yes. process, everything is manual? Yes. Here. Okay. That's like if you're asking, we only have handmade rugs here. Yes, we do. That's what I was wondering. Yes, we do. We only have handmade rugs. I am very sure that your wonderful guy has told you a lot about Turkish traditions and costume and cost customs. But one of them is the hospitality in this country, which is quite legendary. Yes. And I have to obey to certain rules, and one of them is that I cannot skip that part to offer you something to drink. <laughs> Okay. The warm beverage. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can choose to drink anything, a lot of things. I'm going to give you the choices. Uh, one of them being uh, a Turkish tea. But if you're asking yourself what a Turkish tea is, as far as my home and my wife is concerned, it's more like a kind of a Lipton tea prepared in a Turkish way. <laughs> well, it's the way you prepare it that makes it Turkish, not the bread. <laughs> then, other than that, you can choose to drink a delicious apple tea. You can choose to drink a Turkish coffee, and we have a wonderful saying for that Turkish coffee, a sentence that says that a cup, an offered cup of Turkish coffee is truly worth 40 years of friendship. <laughs> then we have the alcoholic drinks, and don't, don't look at your watches, because I know that it's five o'clock somewhere around the world. Now, I don't know if you've heard about the Raki. The Raki is the local alcoholic drink. Yes. And I see just like a Greek was or French pasties for an only car. A little warning, if you drink a Rocky and end up buying a carpet, you have only yourself to blame. <laughs> that being said. Other than that, you know, this part of the world is truly a miracle part because it is literally the heaven described on the Old Testament in the Genesis book with two of, of three of these rivers crossing this, uh, this country. We have Dijle, you have Frat, and Pishon, which is known as Kuzulurmak. And Kuzulurmak is literally the closest we are. And when the first time I brought my wife here, and we have read the, the Bible and all the other books, and said, remember the Genesis? <coughs> and I said, I brought you to heaven. But that is also the modern land of vineyards and wine. So we happen to have a delicious red or white wine as well. Let me go back at the very first. Is there anybody for Turkish tea? Dear guys, I try, I, I try and give you a little about the historic, a little about the technique. No, let me try and help you not to get confused when the time comes to choose a carpet. Because based on the, their uniqueness, the choice becomes almost like infinite. But to simplify of the understanding, I'm dividing the concept into two main concepts. For me, a rug is either a tribal rug, which involves those more geometric patterns, beautiful vivid colors and nine idea. Our rug it belongs to what I call the imperial concept. With those more floral designs, central medallions, oval patterns like the one that you did touch, man. And it's also what we call an imperial style. So going back to the very, very first time, I would like to start with four magnificent carpets. They're all tribal. They all come from small, different parts of the country. But rather than giving you their geography, which I will, I'd rather give you their origin of culture to also try and emphasize your attention on this beautiful multicultural mosaic the country is. And I'd like to start with a beautiful example from South Turkey on the shore of the Taurus Mountain, closer to the sea level. A beautiful small town called the Shemalt is making those beautiful rugs. Okay, let's continue with an example of the you know Azerbaijan? Yes. We have Azeri Turks living also here in Turkey, southeastern Turkey. And that is an example of the Azeri culture. Now comes an example from the Turkmen culture. This one, oh, sorry, they, you cheated on me. <laughs> okay, that is the Azeri, the, this is the Armenian culture. Your guests, and that is the Turkmen culture. Do you know what I told you about uh, a culture being stubborn enough to keep on using saffron? And that is the one. Look at that beautiful deep yellow that you have on these ones. Okay. 
Gang? Armenia. And that is Turkmen. Your guesses. Earlier we were, we were speaking of wool, right? I mean, but what is making the wool different from one another? They're all pure wool, yes, but wool can be uh, from sea level, from high mountain. It can be from lambs, from sheep, from uh, other animals. Although we do not have any alpaca or llama in this country, we have, you know, we have other ones. We have other, other animals. Huh? Camels? No, we are not using camel. Uh, because they're yeah. like, aren't, aren't the llamas part of the Well, uh, interestingly, a lot of people, well, especially because of this secret brand camel, <laughs> who always have kind of emphasized the, the camel as an animal, camel is mainly a desert animal, and that is, we're, we're not a camel country, per se. Mm -hmm. But we are a horse country. Yeah. We are a horse country. Okay. No, but we are also a goat country. Yeah, we have a lot of goats. Okay. Okay. So let me let me get, try and give you a little idea. This one, being closer to the sea level with the warmer weather, is going to be carrying less lanolin because the animal does not require that much. When we're I'm jumping to the one just behind my, me, this one is from a high mountain area, so the wool is going to be oilier, if I may put it in this different proper word, with more lanolin. That is going to also give you a softer touch. Well, this one is what we call the Angora wool, but not the rabbits, because you'd need a million rabbits for a rug like that. No, it's the goat of Angora. A goat, a goat yes. Angora, goat. And Angora, and Angora is the old name of our capital city of Ankara. And even the local people of the city calls their city, they call their city Angara, not Ankara. And finally, that one is not even sheeple, it's lamb's wool. So the best way to understand that, you can you know, stand up and touch it with your fingers, or you can take your shoes and socks off and walk barefoot on them, because that is a better way to understand that the feet are more sensitive than the hands. And if you want to do that, please, you're welcome. You can take the shoes. Yes, please take your shoes, take your socks off, <laughs> and walk. If you want to feel it, start with this one, because that is going to be, well, that is still soft, but that is compared to the others a rougher feel. May I also ask you to take your mask off because I want people to see your, your impressions on your face when you're walking on these different masks. Let me help you and start walking this one, please. Turn your face to the crowd and tell them what you feel on this one. <coughs> soft, but now walk on that one, you're going to feel it softer. This is a little drier, this is a little oilier. Yeah. Walk on that one now. How's the feeling on that one? Different. Yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. How about this one? Yes. But the softest is definitely that one. It is thicker. Yes, it is also thicker. Yes. Well, it seems to be the, the, the trim is actually a little thicker. That's all. It's all about the length of the climb. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what I'm trying to do here is not try is not try and pretend that one is better than the other. I just want to emphasize your attention on the, on the different feelings. Before going, I'd like to present one final piece, to, ladies and gentlemen, that we are very proud of. A piece that Doku Art is actually producing and have created in the proper sense of the word to, you know, Doku art is a, I hate the word, but it is a culture. But not in the governmental sense of the word. It is an organization that has been founded in the end of the 1980s by very foreseen families, understanding that the, the future was very, how do you say that, misty, as far as production of animal drugs are concerned. Because they, they understood already then that the younger generations would start not wanting to do that. 
and that is how they founded this and acquired the support of many women uh, organizations, you know, support organizations, local and international. And uh, about a, a decade ago, or a few, a little more than a decade ago, they came up with the idea to produce the carpets. But, you know, based on that very deep history this, this land has, and this is why gathering all these information from sort of these ancient cultures, they came up with the own design, and we have called that collection fairly the Hittite collection. And here's a beautiful example. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. May I have your attentions on the... No, you know what, let's have drinks first. Uh, let me introduce a very, very old friend of mine. Uh, he is 120 years old. Who is younger? Of course me. Of course me. My beard is shorter than yours. So he's going to be one of the colleagues who is going to come and assist individually if one of you is willing to. I, I, will, try. I will try, by the way. Okay, please have a seat. Dear guests, may I have your attentions onto the beautiful color combination of this vacation, of this beautiful carpet? Look what happens when my friends are flipping the carpet around. Keep watching it. Nation now. Wow. Did you see the color change? Yes. Yes. Do you want to see it one more time? Please, one more time. Do you know why the colors are changing? Yes, she does. She does. It's something with the nap of the... No, it's, it's something with the drinks. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It is, it, has, it is because of, of the pile angle. That pile angle will either reflect or absorb the, dark, uh, the, uh, the light. So obviously you'll have a darker and side, lighter side. And that is the most simple way to check out if a rug is truly handmade or not. Okay. Now, from now on, I'll be uh, shutting down for a moment in order to let you enjoy the firework of these beautiful handmade rugs coming from all across the country and many more that I have not shown you yet. So please, make it rain. Yeah. Tek yolukta kalmayın lütfen. Evet, moda, evet, şeylerden, Azerilerden hiç yokmuş ya. Bir tane daha Azeri açar mısın? Evet, abi. How are you enjoying the display? Aren't they beautiful? Okay. Dear guests, I just want to I don't want to take it away. Okay, let's make that an auction. I heard you. Dear guests, 
Okay. You have seen some beautiful examples from the first group, and we do have so many thousands more. So please, do not restrain yourselves into what you have seen, but rather, if there is an idea that you'd like to explore on many different sides, feel free to ask at the end, okay? Now, let me switch now to that second concept. And I'd like to start especially with one rug that I was talking about, like the barbarian rug that you were speaking, with no dyes whatsoever, but only the natural color of the wool. Uh, so these guys are dyed. These are all vegetable dyes. Right. Yes. Because this I has no dye know. at all. Okay. You said the rest, the the, the, the pure animal. Yeah, the pure and animal true. color. Yeah. yeah. That's. The what? Pure animal. What? Pure animal <laughs> color. No. No <laughs> dye. Yeah. And we are calling that collection the natural collection. But you see immediately the change in the style from you know primitive and geometric to floral designs? Yeah. Okay, and that is why I'm calling them the imperial style. Okay, okay. it's floral. It's floral. Okay. Like, that one is also the, an imperial style. You see, although these ones have a very deep history and I can keep talking about the symbolism and their patterns, I cannot tell any word about those ones because they have absolutely no meanings whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They're only decorative. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful, but don't search for a history behind them. Right. Okay. So let me show you a few more of these high city carpets. And throughout history, uh, several towns, several big cities have become the weaving centers for interior rugs. Like Kai City, and these are the ones that I'm showing you. Kai City is one of the closest city that yes. we have here. But we have others like Sivas. Where we landed. Odi, Erek Edi, Abi. The town we landed. Kai City. Kai City. Here's a beautiful example that we are calling the royal example. I'm telling you. Look at that beautiful piece. It just carries all three, uh, all three material together. Wool, cotton, and silk on the highlight of the flowers. Hereke. Hereke, the last imperial manufacturer. You remember what I talked about in 1843 by the Sultan Magic? The most catalog design you can ever get. The Hereke, the flowers of the seven hills. Look at that beautiful central medallion. That's also a carry. Sorry? That's also a carry. No, no, that is not Kaiser anymore. The, this one, that one, they're coming from the area of Konya city. But uh, there is, well, before I go in, for, I'd like, there is two very beautiful, very unique carpets that I'd like to show you. And they're very expensive. And I'll tell you now. Yeah. Dear guests, there are certain families who are working wonders on handmade rugs, and one of them is the Terzul family. Terzul fa old family, and we do not have a huge collection because uh, they 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 made these as a project like uh, you know eight or ten years ago, and they have stopped that project. The project was to wow. gather all the antique wool rugs and use their material to make carpets. <coughs> and please have a look at those ones. I will not pretend they're antique, but they do carry that beautiful antique look. And they are called the Zara. They are coming from Sivas. They have another production in the city of Samsun, like that one, where they are producing woolen cotton rugs as fine as silk rugs. So they are going to cost you as, mo uh, 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 as much as a silk rug. Look at that one. Silk yourself. Let me, let me show you the back of the product. You see, the back tells you everything. Mm -hmm. The tightness of the weave is as tight as a pure silk rug. Silk, just, you take it yourself, consider it. Let me show you the back of a 100% pure silk car carpet as well, ladies and gentlemen. That is 100% pure silk. Look at the back, they carry the same amount of knots. Wow. So that is why carpets have are priced what they are priced, okay? Just have to have them, So those were last a long, long time last year. 
Generations. Oh yeah. We are cleaning all handmade rugs, regardless of what material is being used. From wool to silk with only one ingredient, the most natural one, natural soap. Like ivory soap in the United States. That is all you need, that is all we use. Not ivory soap, but we have our own soap. <laughs> okay, Ushak, ladies and gentlemen, is a name that has been awarded many uh, awards in the Architectural Digest magazine mm -hmm. for being, I don't know, a, a magnificent piece. Achai. One more time, that beautiful color change. Wow. Oh, that is an 8 by 10. Gazelle. 8 feet by 10 feet. You mean gazelle. You said, I said, I said, I shouldn't be found out on the night. 90% true. Let us show you a few more old shot rugs. Yes, you said, 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 Okay, let me show you two magnificent You pick the final choices. If I. Acha. If I were to tell you that only one of these two, may I ask you not to take pictures of those patterns, madam? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. Or if you did take it, don't post them online. No, of course not. Thank you. I don't post anything. Oh, good then. I don't post anything. I don't post anything. I do. Do you hear guess? Yeah, I do. If I were to ask you what material you think those rugs are, oh, oh. Like please come in, come closer. Yeah, I should feel them. No, you, no, 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 you can walk with your shoes. It, it doesn't matter. Please, I'm serious. Okay, the, the wild one is the one that is not silk. This one not silk? This one not silk. This one silk. I would have thought this one silk. Okay, how are you telling that? Just because you know. Well, not only because I know, but then if you want to know as well, you just have to rub your fingers on both surfaces. Finding out which one is the rougher one. This one. So silk is always rougher than cotton. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, oh, okay. Cotton. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is more. cotton, this is silk. This is cotton? This is cotton, this is silk. Oh. And that is what they present you as a cheap silk. Which, there is no such a thing. <laughs> and the cotton is probably as a... No, it is all the price of this one, only because of the material difference. So this one's going to last longer. Yeah. Well, maybe after 200 years, but who cares? Yeah, yeah. I know. The wool is The wool out there. You know, the durability of the rug is, it doesn't depend on what material that has been used. It's points to structure. Just to be gauche, what's the price of both of them? Okay, fair enough. Okay, the price of that one is going to be $28,000 and divide the price of that one by two. It's easy. $14,000, $28,000. Very nice. Look, hey, you did ask it. You did, you did ask it. Yes, I Okay, good. Yeah. This is more expensive. No, this is $28,000. Come on, John. Okay. Fourteen thousand. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Well, then if you want to pay forty, I'm not. I'm not on it. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Okay, let me show you a few more of these beautiful cotton ones. I think they all fit. It is about the same. That's another awarded pattern, ladies and gentlemen. The Oriental or Ottoman song. He had good taste. <laughs> Look, I cannot say anything about neither taste nor color. So. <laughs>
And let me show you a few more pure cell drugs, ladies and gentlemen. Pure cell. Pure cell. Pure cell, yes. Pure cell, yes. Pure cell, yes. Şimdi bir kişi daha girsin. Dear guests, may I add your attentions for the very last time and invite you closer to me. With your shoes, without your shoes, it doesn't matter. Please come closer. Because of the piece that I'm about to show you is a very, is a truly tiny one. But it's a, it's a worthwhile piece. It's a collector's item. It's an investment piece. And there is one number that has been recorded in the Guinness Book of World Records. The, in 1984, and that number is 3,760. It's 3,760 knots in one square inch. Oh, sorry. Look, that is a, an inch square. 3,760 knots in one square inch. The one that I'm about to show you is one that carries 4,030 knots per square inch. That's a lot too. That's more than more. the other. <laughs> okay, that nice. very tiny piece took more than three years to make because I mean, it's not the way you make wool rugs anymore. It's magnifiers, pincets, and the room with stable temperature and humidity. And after she accomplished that one, we asked her to repeat. Ah. She said, get the hell out of my house. I don't want to see you guys, see you guys any, anymore. Okay, you guys, I think that the carpet will speak for us. Wow. Did they give that to the last people? That's not in a museum? Is this a museum? This is a museum. But it, it is a museum where you can buy items. <laughs> you just flipped it, right? Yeah, that is the back. And if you're asking yourselves how much that one cost, that is twenty-five thousand dollars. Wow, what but, an artist! But gladly we have. If you're interested in those beautiful wall hangings, we have others that will not be that expensive because they will not be made with that high of a density of funds, but high still enough to be considered a collector's item or an investment piece. They are more made in the in the around of 1,000 knots per square inch. I have, okay, two friends. May I, may I see them, please? Oh. The tree of life in the old Istanbul. And we have a room full of those small little wonders. For those of you who might be interested. What, now, what did that cost? What? Tree of life. Kaç para yazıyorum lan? Well, that one will cost you eight eight thousand five hundred dollars. Is that is that silk? Yeah, they are all silk, madam. Yes. And that little guy will cost you a little more because it's a little bigger, like twelve thousand dollars. Okay. Dear guests, I will be stopping here. Uh, if we all understand that no one comes here with the intention to buy anything and that is so far that has been not the main purpose because we've been working with OAT for quite some years right now and we understand you, we are serving you and we are considering you as guests before anything else. And if in the end you decide to, you want to end up buying a carpet from us, you are going to become a contributor more than a customer. In this condition we will offer you a free door-to-door -door delivery meaning the transportation cost, custom duties of your countries, broker charge and face insurance name, everything is included in whatever you are going to be quoted on the price because we are going to pay those charges and get them back at the end of the year from the Turkish government as an export subsidy. That being said, you have heard a few big prices because, John, who did ask for it? Yes, you did ask for big prices, I'm sorry. But we also have small things. Like, do you remember the very first big red carpet, the room size big carpet, red one? Down? That one will only cost you $2,500. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, we have rugs for all sorts of prices, ladies and gentlemen. So don't be frightened. <laughs> Two advices that I would like to give to those of you who might anticipate to make a choice. Number one is going to be not to try and make that choice in this room anymore. It's too confusing. You must look at a rug on a bare floor. But this is why my colleagues may invite you in free rooms to show you more on a bare floor. The second advice that I'd like to give you, we are not mind readers. We cannot know if you have set in mind a budget you do not want to cross. And since we do not know that, we may waste your time for nothing. Please mention that that number, if you are interested, which is going to narrow the, the choice towards the right direction and not waste your time for nothing. And again, in the end, you buy, you do not buy, you are the master of your free will. We are still going to be friends, ladies and gentlemen. But if you end up buying, we will become good friends, though. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience. Enjoy your time in this country, and I hope that you are going to go back with beautiful memories and that Beautiful this pleasure. part of your tree will be one of the most memorable ones. Thank you again. Take care of yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.